yes hello speech welcome on your video platform and let's start your uh, okay so yes. let's start your basic thermodynamic snap only okay sir so what you understand by thermodynamic cycle speech sir so, thermodynamic cycle is a initial state if 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 system is set to mm-hmm. hello sir hello yes, sir i am listening i am adam ah uh, yes sir your audible please go ahead system is set to undergoing a cycle if initial state and final states are identical then we can say that system is undergoing thermodynamic cycle acha can you tell me the difference between a reversible and irreversible cycle and sir, why revers- you reversible cycles are most efficient sir a reversible cy- reversible process is a hypothetical process if a system is undergoing from one equilibrium state to another equilibrium state by one path if we, if we are going back to the initial state in the same path and there is no effect in the surrounding and system so then mm-hmm. we can say that this process is reversible process if a process other than the reversible process we can call it as a irreversible process in general all the natural process occurring in the nature are irreversible processes how we can say that reversible cycle is a most efficient uh, cycle sir a reversible cycle is a uh, quasi static process and there is no friction and no dissipative effects so that uh, uh, we will get the maximum efficiency can you give me some example of reversible cycles sir uh, carnot cycle is a uh, one such uh, cycle which is uh, uh, reversible cycle sir so auto cycle diesel cycle dual cycle auto auto cycle diesel cycle dual cycle all are uh, actually internally reversible process reversible cycle internally reversible cycles carnot yeah. cycle is the complete reversible cycle they are not completely reversible ah uh, they are not completely reversible as yes, sir internally reversible only causing, sir you know what is causing irreversibility in auto cycle and diesel cycle sir uh, uh, interaction Uh, system is interacting with uh, surrounding by uh, heat and work transfers acha how we can we can make them reversible externally also sorry sir i don't have no for a, for example any particular auto cycle diesel cycle you are having and for example we want to make them uh, a uh, reversible cycle Yes, sir. Complete reversible cycle. They are internally, but uh, externally also we want to make them. Then what we can do? Sir, yeah, uh, heat transfer should be occurring with the infinitely small temperature difference. Hmm. Good. Uh, one one is that one, and uh, process also should be occurring very slowly. All the processes should be occurring in very slowly, such that there is no dissipative effect. then i think we can get the complete reversible process okay mm-hmm. please can you tell me something about carnot theorem what is carnot theorem sir carnot theorem is saying that if all the reversible heat engines operating between the same temperature limits will give the same efficiency and other than Uh, another sense is if uh, one uh, if two engines are operating between the same temperature limits one is operating on reversible cycle another is operating on the irreversible cycle then reversible cycle is having ma- maximum efficiency two are parallel statements <laughs> Okay, can you draw a one cycle, Nastish? Let me give you some of the thermodynamic processes, sir. Okay, which cycle, sir? I should draw. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, first, like... yes, first take a process, isentropic compression, reversible adiabatic compression process. Yes, sir. Okay, followed okay. by isothermal expansion. Isothermal expansion, yes, sir. Okay. Okay. and then followed by constant volume heat rejection constant volume heat rejection 
yes sir isentropic compression followed by yes, isothermal expansion then constant volume heat rejection yes sir so this cycle is a will be a kind of work producing cycle or work absorbing cycle uh yes sir work producing cycle sir it will be work producing cycle yes sir actually in isothermal process how you, out, how you will find out net work in that this cycle area under pv diagram we can uh, calculate sir mm yes, sir cycle i have drawn is this one. Mm. 1 to 2 is uh, reversible adiabatic compression and 2 to 3 is isothermal expansion in terms that is also means in that process only the heat is adding can you give me some real life realization of you know these three processes how we can have these processes in our life daily life isentropic a reversible adiabatic compression isothermal expansion and then uh, this uh, constant volume heat rejection for example we want to develop some cycle now we got idea ki this can be a work producing cycle okay yes sir yes sir. now you know we want to develop some engine which will run on this cycle okay for that we need to provide uh, such kind of arrangements like in diesel cycle we say the constant pressure heat addition because we are injecting the fuel over yes sir some gas which is expanding yes sir we are adding heat expansion is taking place so that can we can presume it like a constant pressure we can relate it very you know we can approximate it like a constant pressure process similar way yeah. what we can do to achieve these processes in our daily life sorry sir i i am not having clear idea about it. So, how adiabatic process can be achieved? You don't know. Ah, yes, sir. Adiabatic process can be achieved actually with very means. Adiabatic process generally heat transfer is zero. So, this process in axial means axial scenario, adiabatic condition has to happen. Means process should occur in very fast mode. And isothermal process should. Should occur at very slow speed so that we will get the isothermal this processes. This is possible, like the Carnot cycle. Com combination is difficult to achieve, sir. Okay. Ah, uh, uh, please can you explain second law of thermodynamics? Yes, sir. Second law of thermodynamics is a. Uh, directional law direction in which processes are happening in the nature is given by the second law of thermodynamics actually it is comprising of two states two statements one is kelvin flank statements which is related to work producing devices and classier statement is second one that is related to work observing devices first one is kelvin flank statement it is saying that it is impossible to construct a device working between working on the thermodynamic cycle which is producing the network output by interacting with single thermal energy reservoir that means 100% efficiency of thermodynamic cycle is not possible that is kelvin flank statement and second statement is classic statement it is it is giving the direction in which heat transfer is occurring in general heat transfer processes will be occurring in occurring from higher temperature to lower temperature it has to happen in reverse way that means we have to expend some some energy in the form of work so that we can able to transfer the heat from lower temperature to higher temperature mm. okay uh, can you explain the difference between a heater and heat pump please sir uh, heater generally is electrical heater it is converting electricity into heat heat pump is a device uh, which maintains the temperature of the system which is more than the uh, uh, surrounding temperature actually this uh, heat pump is more effective in terms of heating is concerned because in heater case whatever the electrical energy that is in the form that is work we are supplying that will be converting into heat as a means uh, electricity is i mean electricity electrical work is equal to uh, heat transfer in heat pump uh, we will be getting more than the whatever the energy we are uh, spending on the device
Okay, so which one is more efficient and why? Sir, heat pump is more uh, efficient because we are uh, spending some energy. We are getting more outputs. So, suppose I I will draw the one. I will draw one cycle, sir. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Sir, is it visible, sir? Yes, yes. Uh, so downside one is uh, mm -hmm. T2 mm -hmm. and uh, upside one is T1. T1 is more than the T2. This is our uh, heat pump, which is working between the two reservoirs. It is taking Q2 amount of heat and uh, it is sending to the uh, reservoir at T T1. That is Q1 amount. That will be coming as Q2 plus W is equal to Q1, that is the law of conservation of energy, first law of thermodynamics. So we are spending, we are, we are expanding an energy W, but we are getting heating effect more than the W, that is plus Q2. So this is more effective, sir. In case of uh, heater. My last question to you, Steve. Yes. For example, you know, we are having a fully insulated room. Yes, sir. And there is some candle burning inside it. Yes, sir. Then how you will write the conservation of energy? How you will... Sir, uh, yeah, actually, room, if I am taking the system, mm -hmm. there is uh, no, ener no energy transfer in and out as in the form of heat and Q, means W and Q. So, mm -hmm. an energy of the system remains constant, I think, sir. Mm. What if you will take candle as a system? If candle is a system, then uh, that chemical energy or whatever the energy is there, that will be converting into heat, sir. Mm -hmm. So how you will write the, how you will find out the change in temperature, for example, change in temperature inside the room? Sir, that is generally, uh, if I take room as a uh, system, so that is constant volume system. So change in the internal energy of the air, we can calculate, sir, MCV T2 minus T1. So MCV DT, that you will equate with what? It's good, fine. Uh, uh, M is the mass of the air inside the room, CV is the space. Yeah, yeah. In temperature, yes, sir. that you will equate with what, sir? Uh, that candle is having some internal energy, that energy we have to know, sir. Otherwise, if you know the temperature T1 and T2 and the mass of the air and CV of the air, we can calculate what is uh, what is MCV TT so that that is the internal energy which is having. Uh, for sir? that, no, for that, you need to know the internal energy change, yes, sir. The candle energy we should know, sir. I, I think. That will be calorific value. That will be the calorific value of the. Okay, that, that calorific value of the uh, candle, yeah. if we know, then we can multiply with the mass of the candle so that that uh, yeah, energy we can calculate, sir, so MCV. Mm, yes. That we can equate to MCV T2 minus T1. Okay. Okay, Stish, I think now I can provide you the feedback. Yes. So, Stish, your understanding is looking fine. Okay, so I started with the, some thermodynamic cycle. Yes, sir. And then I asked you the difference between a reversible and irreversible cycle. Yes, sir. You know, reversible cycle is a cycle in which there is no loss of work takes place. Yes, sir. Uh, energy, the available energy will remain conserved. Okay, there, there will be no loss of the available energy. No loss of energy. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The whole real cycle, we lose some available energy. We lose some work potential due yes, to the irreversibility. And yes, that correctly you you know thought of the auto and diesel cycle. Those are internally reversible, but externally they are not reversible because when reversible. we auto and diesel cycle, and when we reject the heat addition and rejection takes place with some finite temperature difference. Yes, sir. So in Carnot cycle, when we are adding heat, the source and the system 
system is at same temperature means almost negligible temperature difference yes. you know some kind of superheating if we carry out if you will yes, decrease sir. the temperature difference you although you reached to that you know answer how we mm. can decrease that external irreversibility you know superheating actually going to decrease the external irreversibility how because when we are carrying out superheating the temperature difference between the source and the system is decreasing yes sir so by carrying out superheating we can decrease that external irreversibility although it is you know in real life it is not possible it is not uh, easy to get a kind of reversible process but if anyone will ask you how we can decrease that external irreversibility we can decrease okay. that by carrying out superheating by carrying out regeneration uh, okay so ah okay. uh, yes sir yes sir regeneration also we are having yes by yes, we are having to temperature heat addition we can decrease the external irreversibility yes sir yes okay Okay. Okay. Then I asked you some question related to the thermodynamic cycle. Correctly, yes. your flow and uh, how we can find out the work that was also right. The closed uh, area. Yes, the sir. Diagram. So, me, it's okay. Looking good. At least your understanding is looking fine. Okay. Your yes. knowledge is okay. good. So this time I asked you some of the basic level question. Again, you can join me and some more, you know, application based question uh, we can discuss. Okay. okay 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 so i hope you are you know i feel on right line you are preparing for drdo please keep revising yes, watch my yes, sir listen to some of the yes. snaps related to drdo and other research related organization okay, okay. so good luck and keep preparing okay thank you sir.